All right, hi everybody, and welcome back. Uh, Ryan here once again. Uh, so today in the shop, we got a 2018 International LT with a uh, Cummins X15 Efficiency Series, 400 horsepower with a 10-speed uh, automated Eaton transmission. Uh, customer came in, had a vibration, um, not when he's driving, I mean, basically all the time, even when it's idle and has a vibration, if you idle it up, it has a vibration, then I guess down going down the road, it's even more pronounced. Um, so he's been at all the local steelerships, you know, your Cummins, Internationals, all those guys. And um, they even had a guy putting like new rims on, new tires and everything else. And it's like, okay, it doesn't want to sit still. So it's obviously doesn't have anything to do with the wheels. Um, so we got it here and uh, we're going to kind of go through it, tell you my thoughts. I got some stuff torn down here and uh, we'll kind of take it from there. By the way, if you guys are uh, new to the channel, um, as you know, we got a lot of stuff on owner operator uh, trucking. Uh, a lot of maintenance videos. I mean, if you, it's the first time you watched us, uh, you know, I, I was a mechanic owner operator for several years, worked at a lot of different companies. So I got a lot of information about that out there. And also um, a lot of our, you know, our maintenance stuff and how to's and all that good stuff. So with that, let's get started. All right. So like I said, customer came in for uh, some vibration issues, obviously within the engine. <laughs> uh, so First thought that comes to my mind is possibly uh, injector issues. Uh, so we ran through, we did injector cutout tests, uh, multiple banks, banks one, banks two, cutting on one, two, and three, and cutting out uh, four, five, and six. Um, ran pressure tests. Interesting thing with the uh, running a fuel system test, which basically pressurizes the system and the rail to max pressure, which on these is roughly 30,000 PSI, which is a lot of pressure. Um, with this, it got, it got to be a lot more noise. And I've done that test several times on other ISXs and Xs. And uh, it, it just got to be a lot more clinking around and a lot more vibration when I was doing that test. And also when I was doing the injector performance test, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, we got a lot more, you know, with that test, you do get a lot of wild uh, RPM changes and all that. Uh, but what, what was interesting is I got a lot more shaking at certain RPMs. Uh, so anyways, like I said, I did an injector cutout test and didn't really get a lot from that. Um, the first time we tried to do an injector performance test, it ended up, it kept saying it failed for a fault, but there was no fault codes. Um, and finally, uh, we got it to go through and do an injector performance test and all the injectors, everything passed and everything was good. Um, and like I said, pressure was good. I mean, I think during the injector performance test, uh, it was some, you know, it was up to like almost 35,000 PSI. Um, like I said, it was making a lot of noise kind of in the front end, front upper end of the engine there. So like I said, I was hoping to find a bad injector or something, be easy day to throw an injector in it, whatever, um, but that wasn't the case. Uh, so kind of going through it, I told the customer let's take the valve cover off. I guess he'd already had Cummins, they'd done an overhead and all that, so that was good. Um, but what, what was kind of questionable with the Cummins dealer is that uh, they changed the he asked to get about getting his crankcase filter up here change, which this one, you know, unlike the ISXs, you know, the ISXs have a cartridge that goes in the little unit. This one's just a whole bolt-on unit. You just change the whole thing out. It's a lot more expensive. Um, but they were trying to tell the guy, like, it's underneath the valve cover and it's a five-hour job when I did it in, like, 15 minutes. So, obviously, I don't feel very comfortable going to somebody that's going to get inside my engine especially a common official, you know, a common sales and service, and they don't even know that the crankcase filter is, is on the side and not underneath the valve cover. There's not even enough room for it to be under the valve cover on these. I mean, some of the older cats and stuff like that, yeah, you got that crankcase filter that's in the valve cover. But obviously, if you work at a Cummins deal, you should probably know that, um, on, on, like I said, on an X or an ISX-15. So uh, anyways, uh, went ahead, pulled the valve cover off, and uh, going ahead and... and turning the uh, engine over and there's a pin that goes in the side of the block where you can pin the crankshaft. Uh, and there's a flat spot on the cam, which I'll show you guys here in a second. And you got these cam wedges here. And most of these engines, unless they're a dual cam, they're a, a six degree cam wedge. And this, this goes down in between the head and the cam. There's a flat spot on the cam. So if, uh, if you're turning the cam, if you're turning the crank over and you end up getting a round spot, then you turn it, the, there's, a, there's a mark on the, the balancer uh, where it says insert pin. So if you turn it around one time and there's a round spot, then obviously you need to turn it over a second time and that's when you'll get the flat spot where this goes in. So uh, went ahead, turned it over, put the uh, cam wedge in and it's uh, down at the bottom, it was a slight, maybe 
maybe a 30 seconds of an inch off, not quite a 16, probably a 30 second, maybe a little less to where it was, the bottom of that was off. So I stuck a, I have a four degree wedge and I stuck a four degree ed, wedge in and it was a little bit off at the top. So it tells me if I had a five degree, which they don't make a five degree as far as I know, a five degree probably would have fit perfect in there. So it tells me that the camshaft was timed one degree retarded um, instead of advanced because these are past, as far as I believe, past uh, top dead center. So it was one degree off basically. So I've already taken the cam gear off and, and you, had to, you had to loosen up all the whole valve train and turn the cam a little bit to remedy that. So I've set the cam back in time. And that one degree, it could cause, you know, slight, slight misfire, but these engines, they should pick up and the sensor on there, it should notice that it would be, you know, but maybe only being a half a degree or degree, it, uh, it, it may not be picking it up and it could cause that slight, fire. not quite a misfire, but just, you know, it's not right, you know. Um, the other part of the equation is the uh, dampener, vibration dampener, harmonic balancer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we, we took that off and there, if you don't know those, the dampeners on these, they are a silicone filled, silicone fluid filled dampener to where that, that takes, you know, that fluid moves around in there to take the, any vibrations out of the, uh, the crankshaft and the engine. Um, these, they can leak and if they do leak, they, they will lose the effective, their effectiveness. And with that, um, you can actually destroy a whole engine from a bad balancer. They are kind of expensive, seven, eight hundred dollars. I mean, pretty much across the board. I bought them on uh, Caterpillars and on uh, Cummins, and um, like I said, they're they're right now six six to eight hundred dollars roughly. So um, this customer, I'll show it here to you in a second. What it looks like. Um, the customer did decide to go ahead and get a new one. We're going to throw it on, and hopefully with the timing and the balancer, we've we've hopefully killed this issue and be done with it. Um, and we'll go from there. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. And um, but uh, with that, we're gonna go ahead and show you a couple of things here. And, uh, and then after that, we'll uh, conclude. Okay, guys. So here's the balancer. So we'll kind of start down here on the ground and work our way up. Uh, like I said, these are like I said, they got a silicone fluid in them. They're they're filled. Um, they can leak. Um, and this one does kind of have some signs. There's some little dribbles off of it down here. You might not be able to see it. Um, but it enters the way that this dust is kind of stuck where, I mean, the main seal and everything is really dry. Everything's really, really dry on this engine. So there, there, there aren't any leaks anywhere. Um, so this stuff's got to stick on here some way, but there are some kind of dribbles down on here on the bottom where it looks like something could be possibly leaking. I mean, so you kind of want to look around these seams where this is welded or pressed. And then there's two like plugs here. I guess that's where they fill it at. They can leak at those places as well. Um, if you're getting a Cummins manual, there are some tests where you can, you want to clean the paint off of them and you can take a micrometer in four different locations and test the, uh, the width of them. And there is a, when you have it on the engine, there's a run out test as well in a, in a, a eccentric or eccentricity, if, if that's the correct word, test to where you can, you can check where if it's, if it's got a wobble in it and then also this where you'll check on this side. I mean, I guess that would be the eccentric, eccentric test or eccentricity. Like I said, again, that's probably not the right word, but we'll go with it. Um, so there, there's a couple of different checks on this. Um, but like I said, for what they cost, I know, yeah, six, $800 is a lot of money, but this component right here, especially if you ever do a rebuild on an engine, um, me, myself, if I did an in-frame or a rebuild on an engine, I, unless I replaced the customer, I wouldn't even warrant it unless they replaced this balancer. So, I mean, like I said, a six or $800 balancer on a new in-frame or a new engine rebuild is not worth, you know, a few hundred dollars for a balancer. Because, like I said, these can, if a bad one, can destroy, literally destroy your engine. So, it's better. Um, and they recommend, I believe, uh, Cummins is like 100 120, 150,000 miles, they recommend, or I think even once a year, inspecting these uh, to make sure, like I said, all the, the things that is said to, to make sure these are good. Because like I said, they, a bad one can destroy a good engine. So so that's that. Okay, so kind of moving up here. Um, on most of your, on, on your X15s and ISXs, you're gonna notice on your front cover, there's a little rubber plug on the front of the engine. Um, that plug actually does have a purpose. Um, if you pull it out, Take that, you know, sometimes they get really hard and you gotta take a screwdriver or something and pop them out. You can uh, take a three-quarter drive ratchet or extension 
and it's got right on the end of the uh, air compressor gear here is a square, it's three quarter inch drive where you can actually turn the engine over and bar it over from there. So if you didn't know that, that's how you turn the engine over is taking out that plug. Um, so that's the first thing you need to locate. And then after that, down on the block, it's really hard to see here without getting underneath there and all that. Um, but down below, there's like a casting that comes off of the bottom of the fuel pump, which this thing right here, if you don't know, is the fuel pump. And down below that, there's a plug that takes a six millimeter uh, hex key or hex socket or Allen, Allen socket, whatever, or Allen key. Um, you take that little plug off, then there is a, you have to get a, a timing pin, which is about the size of a 5 16 bolt, but I have, you know, the, a special one that goes in it. Um, and you'll, you'll turn your balancer over. And like I said, I didn't show you a minute ago on the balancer, but there are marks on that balancer. One of them says insert pin. Um, so when you get to that insert pin point, that's when you'll put the pin in. Sometimes you got to rock it back and forth a little bit to get the pin to go all the way into the line if, if you have a pin that has a line on it. Or I think the Cummins one actually has a color, color band or something around it. Um, and then after you get to that pin in, you have to come up on top of the engine here. And, um, and that's when you'll, you'll put your cam wedge in. Unless, like I said earlier, you're on that round side. And then you'll have to turn the engine over again to that insert pin point. Because um, like I said, this is a... a four-stroke engine so you have two revolutions of the crankshaft for one complete cycle basically um, yeah so anyways uh, we'll go up top here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about okay so once you get the engine pinned into the crank and get to the right uh, right cycle I guess the right route you know because like I said you might have to turn it over once to get it to the right side um, you see I have two of these six degree wedges I have one in the engine right now and it there's actually there's a little mill divot in the side of the block here, the head, um, and this this timing wedge just fits down in there. And there's a flat spot on the one of the crank on the. There's like a lobe right there on the crank that that goes down into, and that's where you pin it. And the problem with this one, like I said earlier, was that it was a little bit off at the bottom, so it was like that that was turned just a little bit. So it was probably like I said, a half a degree to a degree off. Um, so I've already went ahead and like I said, you had to, I had to loosen up all the, the valve train here so I could actually turn it and then um, went ahead and tightened everything back up and reset the cam gear. And then after that, you get the great fun part of doing the uh, lash on the gears down here, which this one, this one doesn't have a scissor gear on it, which makes it a little bit easier. It's got a fixed gear. Um, so one thing you have an adjustable idler gear that you got to set the backlash or, or lash uh, with a feeler gauge on two points on the gear on the front gear train up here so and that's kind of critical to these because you have too little lash then it can cause a lot of wear and a lot of noise and, and again if you have too much lash it can cause wear and it can allow that timing to be off as well because it, it allows for play in that cam um, so you want it tight but not too tight so um, so that way everything stays where it should be and that could have been the case in this one. I don't know if somebody had messed with this engine or not because it had some marks on there. So I don't know. It's got 400,000 miles on it. So like I said, I don't know. The customer, he's only had it for a few months. So he don't know if it's been a part or what, what had happened. Or it could have... There, these, there is a problem with cam slippage in these engines because with that gear and the way that this is set up with that adjustable idler, which again, we'll show you guys here in a second, um, stuff can loosen up. And, and, and the cam gear is not fixed on this engine. It's actually, it presses on and they use a uh, Loctite 609, like a medium strength retention compound to, uh, to kind of hold the gear on there. So they can, there is a possibility of cam slippage on these. So, and then that way you can get out of time and possibly cause vibrations again and other stuff. But uh, anyways, uh, we'll show you the front gears here. And I think that'll pretty much wrap this up and uh, I'll probably get this thing back together in the morning and go from there. Okay guys, so as I said, this is the cam gear right here, and this basically presses on. Now this toner ring here, it actually has a pin to where it stays on, so these notches, uh, you know, hit the cam position sensor up here at the right time, or where it's supposed to. Um, this is an adjustable idler. I've already done this one, uh, which I gotta do this quick. Uh, this is a adjustable gear. This is where you set your backlash. There's there's marks, arrows on here with like a little feeler gauge. And that 
annotates where you put your feeler gauge at on the top and on the bottom for the intermediate idler down here. Um, and like I said, this one has a fixed gear down there at the bottom. Some of these actually down here, that gear down there at the bottom, the big gear with four bolts on it. Some of the uh, some of the edges have a, a scissor gear down there where they have a bunch of springs, and it actually splits in the middle of the gear and actually kind of preloads all the gears to take uh, keeps all the gears tight to to where to where it, uh, prevent uh, excessive gear wear and excessive gear chatter through the gear train here. So, uh, but this one doesn't have it. Everything's fixed. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I mean, well, on this job, it's a good thing because I don't have to mess with it, and it makes this job a lot easier. And uh, I was able to get away without taking the radiator and all this stuff out on this one with what we were doing. So it makes it a little bit simpler. Uh, like I said, it is possible on that. Like I said, this is international. It makes it a little bit. I was able to get in here with everything. I had to take the uh, fan hub here loose to get one of the bolts out, but um, and I had to drop the cover plate, gear housing cover down to the bottom. But uh, like I said, not not too big of a deal, not too big of a hassle with with. Uh, but yeah, um, it kind of is what it is. <laughs> All right, so back up on top here. Uh, like I said, you know, if it's, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm not a big fan of international trucks. Uh, here's another reason why, um, they use these like heat shrunk bands on everything. Uh, so basically if I wanted to take this off, I would have to cut this band off and then have to put a clamp back on it. They do the same thing over here on the intake, uh, tubes as well from the turbo to the charger cooler. So, uh, this not a big fan of international trucks all around. I don't, I don't uh, especially their engines, of course, which you all probably know. Uh, you know, all that's good stuff about. Uh, but anyways, guys, uh, that's pretty much it on this project. Uh, I'm going to try to get this wrapped up in the morning, and uh, hopefully we start it up and don't have any vibrations, because I think we pretty much hit all the points that I can think of, unless we get into Insight and uh, do some fuel timing uh, changes or something like that. Uh, but like I said, we've, we've Everybody else has covered all the bases, and I think we're, we're kind of hitting the last ones here, so uh, hopefully that uh, solves the issue. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this job. Uh, we'll get her thrown back together here in the morning, and uh, hopefully no more vibrations, and we go on with life. Um, so, like I said, if you're, as I always say, if, uh, if you're new, uh, please subscribe and uh, check out our other videos. And as always, give us a thumbs up and um, hit the bell for the updates so you're always getting new videos like this one or of interest uh, that you might like. Um, also, uh, we just started going on to uh, TikTok as well, um, which we're doing short videos, kind of summarizing kind of when we had a truck come in, what, what kind of a new theme we want to start. Uh, have a truck come in and just kind of, you know, short three minute, two, three minute video on uh, what, what, what's going on with it and kind of what direction we're going and what we think might be wrong with it and you know sometimes some some you know with some final results so so check that stuff out as well if you're kind of looking for shorter little tidbits and all that good stuff so with that guys uh, thanks for all the support thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time